Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about S omeprazole. What is this drug S omeprazole? The suffix prazole indicates this drug is a proton pump inhibitor, commonly known as PPI. Actually, this drug is an S isomer of omeprazole, which is one of the well known proton pump inhibitor. These proton pump inhibitors are particularly used when there is an excess gastric acid secretion which may be due to the different reasons. One of the conditions is the reflux of gastric acid into the esophagus. Here we can observe reflux of gastric acid into the esophagus resulting in the erosive esophagitis and heartburn. This condition is known as GRD, gastroesophageal reflux disorder. In such condition we can use proton pump inhibitors. Similarly, infections such as Helicobacter pylori infection. This H. pylori can increase the gastric acid secretion where these proton pump inhibitors can control this gastric acid secretion along with other antibiotics. And finally, gastric acid can also be excessively secreted in the patients who are using NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for long-term treatment. These NSAIDs are going to inhibit the prostaglandins which are reducing the gastric acid secretion. So, in presence of NSAIDs, gastric acid secretion is excessively increased, which may lead to gastric ulcers. So, in all these conditions, esimeprazole can be used as a proton pump inhibitor. So, today in this video, we are going to discuss about this esimeprazole. What is the chemical nature of this drug? How this drug acts? What is the mechanism of action? Important precautions drug interactions, side effects and clinical use of this drug we will discuss in this video. Now, esimeprazole can be used in the treatment of GRD, gastroesophageal reflux disorder. So, this is a condition where reflux of gastric acid is observed within the esophagus resulting in the esophagitis, heartburn. In such conditions, esimeprazole can be given and it can be used up to 4 to 8 weeks based on the severity of the disorder. Similarly, this drug can be used in the treatment of NSAID induced gastric ulcers and for this purpose, esimeprazole can be used up to 6 months. Third clinical use of this drug is in the treatment of Zollinger ellison syndrome. So, this is one of the syndrome where excessive gastric acid is going to be released because of a tumor that is producing the gastrin. Gastrin is a hormone which promotes the gastric acid secretion. So, in such conditions, esimeprazole can be given in order to reduce the gastric acid secretion. And finally, esimeprazole can also be used in the treatment of H. pylori infection. This drug is not directly reducing the H. pylori infection, but it is only used to reduce the gastric acid secretion. That's why it is not used alone. It is combined with other drugs as triple therapy or quadruple therapy. In the triple therapy, esimeprazole is combined with other drugs such as amoxicillin, which is a penicillin antibiotic, Similarly, clarithromycin, which is a macrolide antibiotic. So, this combination can be used to treat H. pylori infection. But here care should be taken because the levels of esimeprazole can be affected by clarithromycin. So, dose should be adjusted on long term treatment. Now, let us see the chemical nature of this drug. So, this is the structure of esimeprazole. And here we can observe one of the heterocyclic ring system with two nitrogens. This is nothing but 1H benzimidazole. Similarly, we can find another group here. This is the sulfoxide group. Because of this sulfoxide group, now esimeprazole acts as prodrug. This sulfoxide is converted to sulfenamide, which is the active metabolite of this esimeprazole. Now we can identify the other chains. So, sixth position methoxy group is there, 6 methoxy. And second position, it is on the sulfoxide, which is further attached with the methyl group. So, we can write this as 2 dash methyl sulfenyl. Now, to this methyl group, pyridine ring system is attached by second position. So, pyridine 2 ion. And to this pyridine, fourth position methoxy group is present. So, 4 methoxy. Third and fifth position design the methyl groups. So, 3 5 dimethyl. That is the complete name of S omeprazole. Now, let us see how this drug acts. So, within the stomach at acidic canal actually the pH is 
but when this gastric acid is going to be released the ph is going to be changed and it results in the ph of 1 now in this acidic environment the omeprazole is going to be converted into its active metabolite as omeprazole initially present as a sulfoxide but in the acidic environment it can be converted into sulfenamide metabolite now this sulfenamide is the active metabolite which can block proton pump thereby it can control the gastric acid secretion. Now let us see how this gastric acid is going to be released. Water and carbon dioxide can be combined to produce carbonic acid H2CO3 and this step is mediated by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase enzyme. Now once this carbonic acid is formed it can be split into bicarbonate as well as proton. This bicarbonate ion can be exchanged for chloride ions. In this way chloride can enter into the gastric epithelial cells. Now this chloride can be directly secreted into the stomach but the proton cannot be directly secreted. The proton requires a special pump which is nothing but proton pump. Now this proton can be secreted for the exchange with potassium. In this way H plus ions can be secreted. Now H plus ions and chloride can produce HCl which is a chief component in the gastric acid. Here this secretion of gastric acid is controlled by s omeprazole now s omeprazole can enter into the epithelial cells where it can be converted into the acidic environment as an active metabolite now the active metabolites of s omeprazole are accumulated within the acidic canaliculi then they're going to be released and can act on the proton pump to inhibit its activity in this way sulfenamide metabolite of s omeprazole can inhibit the proton pumps such that the proton secretion can be inhibited and because of selective accumulation within the acidic canaliculi Esomeprazole can show long duration of action on the proton pump. Now let us see the precautions of esomeprazole. One of the important precautions of this drug is that this drug can produce mole absorption. Because of this effect, it can reduce the absorption of cyanocobalamin, vitamin B12. Normally, gastric acid is required for the absorption of vitamin B12, which is associated with the protein part. Now by the action of gastric acid, this protein pot is going to be digested and vitamin B12 is going to be released, which is then absorbed. But in presence of s omeprazole the gastric acid secretion is inhibited, resulting in the echlorhydria. Now this echlorhydria results in the decreased absorption of vitamin B12, leading to vitamin B12 deficiency. So this deficiency may lead to anemia, fatigue and muscle weakness in the patients. But this effect of esomeprazole on vitamin B12 can be observed when this drug is used for greater than 3 years. So on the long term treatment, esomeprazole can produce vitamin B12 deficiency. Similarly, this drug can also produce one of the conditions CDAD, Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea. This is the diarrhea produced by the organism Clostridium difficile. Normally at the colon, the protective bacteria is present which is called gut flora. Now, few of the organisms such as Clostridium difficile are not producing any infection in presence of this gut flora. But when this esomeprazole is going to be used, it can reduce the gastric acid secretion, thereby it can increase the pH and this bacterial gut flora may be inhibited. In such conditions, this Clostridium difficile can attack the colon to produce diarrhea in the patients. This diarrhea can also be produced by other antibiotics and care should be taken when this drug is combined with other antibiotics. This diarrhea can be treated by few of the drugs such as amoxicillin and clarithromycin which can control this Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea. Another effect of this drug is on the bones. So esomeprazole can increase the bone fractures. This may be related to decreased levels of calcium resulting in the demineralization. So esomeprazole can produce the fractures of hip, wrist as well as spine. So in the patients with risk of osteoporosis, this drug should be carefully given. And when this drug is given at high dose such as 40 mg or when it is given at multiple daily doses such as twice daily instead of once daily or when this drug is used for long term treatment such as greater than one year, we can observe more increased risk of bone fractures. Similarly, this drug can affect serum potassium levels. Esmeprazole can reduce the serum potassium levels resulting in hypomagnesemia. This condition if it is not controlled, it can produce various effects such as muscle weakness, tetany, muscle paralysis. Similarly, it can also produce cardiac arrhythmias or even seizures in the patients. 
So these potassium levels should be carefully checked when this drug is prescribed for long-term treatment. What are the side effects? The side effects of esomeprazole are mainly related with gastrointestinal system. It can produce few of the side effects such as nausea, flatulence, abdominal pain, constipation and dry mouth. But on long-term treatment, this drug can produce diarrhea, particularly clostridium difficile associated diarrhea. What are the drug interactions? Just like the other proton pump inhibitors, esomeprazole is metabolized by cytochrome P450 system. Among this, CYP3F4 is one of the enzyme and another enzyme is the CYP2C19. So we have few of the drugs such as voriconazole, which is an antifungal agent, which is a, and this drug acts as a strong inhibitor of CYP3F4 enzyme, thereby it inhibits the metabolism of esomeprazole. Similarly, drugs like St. John's Watt, which is used as antidepressant agent, and rifampin, which is a antimycobacterial. These drugs act as inducers of CYP3A4, thereby they increase the metabolism of esmeprazole. Similarly, esmeprazole can interact with other drugs such as clopidogrel. Clopidogrel is an antiplatelet agent, which is going to be converted into active metabolite by CYP2C19. This metabolic enzyme is going to be blocked by esmeprazole, resulting in the decreased activation of clopidogrel and loss of antiplatelet activity. Similarly, we can also find so many other drug interactions with esomeprazole. These interactions may be related with increased gastric pH by the action of esomeprazole and this may result in the decreased absorption of few of the drugs. Otherwise, it may be related with inhibitory effect on CYP2C19 activity. So, esomeprazole can reduce the serum levels of few of the other drugs such as ketoconazole, iron salts, mycophenolate mofetil, all these drugs absorption is going to be inhibited by omeprazole and it can also reduce the levels of nilfenavir and adizanavir. Similarly, it can also increase the serum levels of the other drugs such as saquenavir, desoxin and methotrexate. So, care should be taken when these drugs are combined with esomeprazole. How it is given? This drug is available in the different forms, particularly it is given as delayed release capsules and delayed release tablets. It is available at different strengths such as 20 mg, 40 mg and it is also available as delayed release suspension, even solution for injection. In all these doses forms it is available. The dose of the drug depends on the type of clinical indication. For the treatment of GRD, this drug is initiated at a dose of 20 to 40 mg given for 4 to 8 weeks. But in the children less than 11 years, this drug is given at a dose of 10 to 20 mg for 8 weeks. Similarly, for the treatment of NSAID induced ulcers, this drug can be given at a dose of 20 to 40 mg for 6 months. So, that's about this drug, S omeprazole, which is an S isomer of omeprazole and it is a proton pump inhibitor. This drug is selectively accumulated within the acidic canaliculi. And this drug being a pro drug, it is going to be converted into sulfenamide active metabolite in presence of acidic environment. So, within the acidic environment, this drug is going to be accumulated and then it can block the activity of proton pump, thereby it can control the gastric acid secretion. Diarrhea induced by clostridium difficile infection, bone fractures, hypomagnesemia are the important precautions that should be considered when this drug is prescribed for long term treatment. So that's about this drug. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.